Hi everyone and welcome to this quick video. Um, I'm doing about some work that I need to do on this engine here. Um, as you know if you've seen any of my other videos um, I'm doing a lot of work on my boat pipe dream. Um, but she's in France and I only get to go across there on my holidays um, to do work on her. And when I'm back here in the UK I work in an office with a computer all day long in project management and yeah these, these hands get really really tired at times. Um, from just tapping keyboards and I need something else to, to do. So I ended up buying this uh, rebuild project here and it is a Ford Model T. Uh, she's 1923 and it's just something to, to do in my spare time while I'm in between trips to go and fix the boat. So the problem I've got to fix today on this, I've got a Kraken block. Now apparently this is a very sort of regular thing with these Ford Model T engines. They crack back here usually um, close to the what's called the hog's head which is the transmission back here transmission cover so you get cracks around here usually because someone hasn't put any antifreeze I mean obviously this is an engine that's almost a hundred years old um, many times either the antifreeze has been diluted or someone didn't put it back in so yeah it pops out this little area here so when I realized I had this problem with the engine that it had a crack quite frankly I was a little bit peeved the first day I was a bit stressed by it because whenever I've heard about crack blocks it's been like throw the block away start again um, and generally why wouldn't you the thing is with Ford Model T's is you know whatever you're buying is going to be a hundred years old or near enough hundred years old um, probably we would have had the same issue at some point um, so and the, the big thing about Ford Model T's is they're not really pressurized systems as such. They don't take a lot of stress and strain. Um, the cast materials, you know, quite, quite sort of, well, it's thin in places, but it's thick in others. It's not really like you're doing a block on a, on a modern car or something like that. And also this is not gonna be a daily driver. I mean, I'm not gonna, well, I might take it for some nice long runs. We don't know, but um, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect it's not like it's charging down a motorway up and down doing 80 90 miles an hour or something I never do faster than a speed limit which here in the UK is 70 miles an hour just say that really sort of um, so yeah so the thing is is there's three ways of getting around a correct block right um, from my research I found you know, there's sort of three approaches you can use um, a lot of people like to weld but then I've seen some really nasty pictures of the world like cracking. Um, then other people like to just um, do this sort of JB weld idea where you just beat out the crack, shove some JB weld in and hopefully it holds. And on something like this, it'll probably hold in all honesty. I've talked to people who've done it and they've said it's lasted for years. The third way and the, what I think is the proper way of doing it is like a lock and stitch. That's where you basically drill a hole so I'm using, just to upset this uh, Imperial engine, I'm using metric. <laughs> so I'm drilling M6 holes, uh, sorry, M5 holes, and then I'm using an M6 tap. So that's a five millimeter hole, and I'm using a six millimeter tap to tap the thread. And then, um, then what you do is you, you put your first piece, so you drill your first hole, you put a little bit of the studding in, you grind it off, um, and make it smooth and then you drill another hole right next to it that actually eats into that first threaded hole just a little bit overlaps slightly put a thread into it wind in another piece of threading so you've got those they, they sort of lock each other in place then as well and of course the threaded part is what holds the, the two bits of uh, you know cast iron together because that thread sort of stops it from moving you know you can peen over the end a little bit to stop it from moving and just tighten it up and then another one and another one. Now, of course, if you've got four inches of crack, um, that sounds dodgy, you've got four inches, you know, you've got to run through a hell of a lot of holes. But in actual fact, this stuff drills up quick and the tap is really easy to, to sort of wind in. I mean, uh, I've just been using a spanner because I haven't got, like, like most of my stuff, the actual thing that I've got, the wrench, proper wrench for a tap is actually in France on the boat. So. Um, you know, it's quite quick to do, it's quite easy to do, 
and you end up with a really good repair because essentially you and you've joined these two bits of cast iron together with this threaded rod yeah and create this really sort of permanent repair the great thing is as well is you're not putting any heat into it um, so if you've not put any heat into it the cast iron's not moving the crack won't change you know things like that so what I should have done is I should have just used the threaded method from the start. I even had the tap on the side. Um, but I thought, I'll try and weld it. And I've got 309 LSI wire all set up, ready for the boat. So I thought, I'll just weld it. Because you know, 309 LSI wire is supposed to be good for this sort of stuff. So I, I stupidly v the whole bloody crack out at the start. Um, and then I found that when I actually started to weld it, with the 309 and SOA wire, I got a crack almost immediately. Well, I say almost immediately. Was, take the you know, take my mask off, look down, and there's a crack. It's not on the side. It's not anywhere around the V. It's not per, you know um, propagating outwards from the the V that I've put in. It's actually through the centre of the stainless steel tack that I've done. It should crack straight through the centre. It's really weird. I haven't really seen my welds ever crack like that before. But I guess it's the, the differential cooling temperatures on something like this and the cast iron comes back like this and just snaps the, the stainless steel weld in half. Essentially you just get this little hairline crack on each one of them. So I quickly realised that I'd really made a mistake and <laughs> it wasn't going to work like that. So I came up with this other idea of doing it. Um, I mean in actual fact the V wasn't that deep and I could have probably tried the lock and stitch. But in all honesty there isn't much... I can't get much threading in there and I thought I'm going to try my own hybrid way because you know if you give me three options I always decide to make up a fourth it's a bad habit of mine so what I've done is I've put in my piece of studding um, in the middle of the crack drilled out put a piece of studding in and then I've left about one diameter thickness and drilled another hole and put a piece of studding in one diameter thickness and another hole like that and put a piece of studding in um, that ground flat on the top and then I use my 309 LSI wire to jump from piece of studding to piece of studding and slightly come out into the block hardly touching at all and I've been using a really quick jab of the trigger so it's n it's only even just a spot weld a very quick spot weld going into the the cast and the great thing is is the stain the, the studding into the cast iron is holding like stopping the cast iron from moving and then the stainless steel is like creating a little seal on top of the studs to stop them from moving. And where it touches into this, the cast, it should give a watertight sort of joint. But up the sides here, the crack actually propagated down the sides. Um, maybe when I was doing some of this work, but I think it was there all the time. And I think this piece of, this piece of cast was about ready to pop out. Um, where it's gone down the side, I haven't veed yet, and I'm not going to vee. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than it was around where the crack area is, because obviously where it cracks, you start getting water coming from rusting it around the edges. And so you actually get a weaker, you know, a thinner sort of um, thing anyway. Whereas this is, a, you know, a much cleaner crack. Um, so the, the, the thickness is a little bit better, so you can get a few more threads per piece of studding in there. Um, and also I'm just worried about getting close to the end, getting 80% done and then finding that the last bit and the whole blooming thing cracks or something. So what I intend to do is just make sure this welding's finished down the bottom and then I'm going to use the standard stitch overlapping threaded rod with no heat, no welding all the way down the sides. To lock each piece of studding in place what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I've already done three holes. Um, and I'm going to put the piece of studding in using a bit of JV weld epoxy as like a Loctite just to hold the studding in place and seal it um, because obviously where I've welded it you've pulled everything around you've got a little bit of weld over the top it's sealed it but so I'd use the JV weld just like Loctite just to hold it in place let it go off overnight and then tomorrow morning I'll drill in between the holes and stick a piece of studding down in between them I've only got about four of them to do each side, so it's quite easy to do. It's not like the previous work I've done going all the way along the edge. 
Um, and again, when I put those extra bits in tomorrow, I use JB work just like a Loctite, just to hold them in place and you know give that little bit of sealant. So I think that's going to work quite well. Um, um, if I was starting this again, I would have just used the standard piece of thread rod in piece of, next piece of thread rod, next piece of thread rod, overlapping, locked all in place, and I wouldn't have bothered with the welder at all. But the welder does seem to have worked though. So if anyone out there who is has a crack in the block and it's too thin to take the piece of studding, putting those pieces of studding in one diameter apart and then jumping, I say one diameter, I mean you can have it slightly more or slightly less. I wouldn't I did actually do one that was like two diameters apart and I just managed to do it and I didn't get a crack, so possibly two diameters apart is possible, but it just felt more comfortable than one diameter because you know that you haven't melted in too much, you haven't put much heat in. And by the way, when I was actually welding this, we're in a couple of, well, in 20 seconds, you can put your hand on top of it and it hot to the touch. But I really hadn't put much heat in, just enough to melt that wire and just enough to melt it slightly into the cast and that's it. No real penetration. Because the thing you've got to remember on this, particularly on the Ford T, is this is not really pressurized. This is not really under any stress. And if there's a slight weeping leak from somewhere, rad weld, whatever, and just clean out the radiator. You know, run rad weld for a few miles and then just drain out the radiator and flush it out. I mean, my radiator's probably gonna have to be recalled, so I'll just run rad weld in it anyway. And then once that's sealed, it's not, you know, it's not gonna leak again. You know, so, yeah, and the thing you've got to remember is there's a 100 year old car you know, the whole bloody thing is so agricultural, it's, it's quite nice working on it really because you're suddenly in this situation where, you know, the paintwork doesn't have to be perfect. It can be nice, it can be, you know, and if you can get it perfect, great. But if you've got a slight bit of trash in the paint or something or, you know, you haven't quite got it smooth, that's patina, <laughs> that's character, you know, that's cool. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a very different thing to work on in the boat. Well, I hope this might be helpful for someone, um, you know, if you've got a similar sort of thing and you've or you feed it out when you shouldn't have. Or, of course, if someone's JB welded your block and it's fallen out and you don't like the idea of JB weld, this might be the solution.